This film is a piece of trash. Um, do you know that, you know, you can prepare for something bad, you know, like when you prepare for something that's really bad, it doesn't hit you as much as if you don't pre prepare for it. So looking at the trailers, at the promos, little city bits that I got, I prepared myself for the garbage that I just witnessed. So it doesn't hit as hard. But I am shocked as to just how the lengths to which Lana Wachowski, who is a moron, let me just be clear here, Lana Wachowski is a moron, the lengths which the moronic Lana Wachowski went to make what I think is a completely garbage, confused piece of crap that is... Um, Resurrections. I don't even want to call it Matrix. We'll just call it Resurrections. Um, this. <clears throat> then, because because after I stopped watching, I was like, like because I just had to let it sell. So I've been on Reddit. I've watched other reviews and so forth. And I was like, well, because see, this is we're gonna go really intense here because we're gonna go all the way back, you know, and really investigates the matrix and how we got here because I, because i've been mean, not just connect all the 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 dots because look bright soldier man like reloaded changed my life matrix reloaded changed my life like the way that film affected me on an emotional and an artistic level no other film has done that to me that's why i watched it six and a half times in the same cinema six times i've, I've never watched a film that many times in the cinema six and a half times um and when you, when you just look at because what strikes me and shocks most about Rare Resurrections is just how sloppy the film is. And when I look at the interviews, you can connect to all the dots because this isn't a film that is made in a organized, comprehensive manner where you're actually trying to tell a particular kind of a story and really push something forward. This is obviously a very personal film that's trying to make a statement. And it's trying to make a statement in a very sloppy, hammer of the head and a very ham-fisted way, which makes it even much more awkward. Because this is an extremely awkward film, like extremely weird. Like, there, bro, there were times where like I just had, I had my 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 mouth was hung open. I was like, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> like, like what, like what, what, the, like what the bloody hell am I am I watching? Because you see. You say to yourself that what? Because I'm one of those guys that said that I am Matrix One and Matrix Reloaded. For me, those are the two films. I think after Reloaded, I don't know what happened. Revolutions, I don't know what happened there. But those are the two films there. So why were they able to do what they did there and unable to do what they did there? And I have a reason for that, and I have, I have a post position. But let's just before we get let's just get into Resurrections. Um. This is an awful film. This film is an awful, horrible film. In terms of pacing, story structure, um, in terms of action choreography, setting up scenes, lines that people are saying, the kind of story you're trying to say that is completely incoherent, hardly makes any sense, and is, again, a keyword here, awkward the horrible use of comedy there are moments where i'm like what there is a moment in this film because I'm, I'm i'll get to spoilers afterwards you know maybe i'll announce what but let's just let, i'm just i'm going to give you general thoughts and then i'm going to say your spoilers afterwards man so there are moments there are moments in this film where you you sit back and say what the hell am i watching Screw it. And we're, we're, you know what? Screw it. Spoilers, man. Screw it. Because, see, this film does not deserve non-spoilers. Non, non Screw it. Um, <laughs> it's like, there's just, there's so much to say. I don't even know where it would have come from. So, Neil Patrick Harris's character, he is pretty much the new architect. 
and he's now created this matrix. He's this dude has created this this matrix. Um and there is a scene where he explains his new version of the matrix. And it's actually an interesting idea of like what a new matrix would, would, would look like. So for the purpose of the idea, the execution of the scene, what, what he's doing, what he's made to do, because it's not you Neil know, Patrick Harris's fault, how he's directed, how he pumps up and down, and how it's the miniature, it's it's in the middle of a bullet time miniature scene. It's weird, and I think that is my the biggest beef of this film because there are okay. Lana Wachowski, if you don't want to make a Matrix film that continues the story of the Matrix, don't bother. Don't waste my time. Don't waste, do not waste anybody's time. If you guys make a film that really tries to push the story forward and is a continuation of the world that he built, don't waste any, any, anyone's time. This was a film that was made to try to prove epic points. If you want to try and laugh at yourself and do a self-reflection of the Matrix franchise and how people have copied the Matrix and so forth and a commentary on Hollywood and so forth, cool, put that in a book. Put it in a book. Don't put that in a, in a film. If your thing is this is Matrix 4, make Matrix 4. Don't make Matrix but a commentary on Hollywood, a commentary on blockbusters, a commentary on, on, on bullet time, less life for that sells, or what if it was a video game, a commentary on gaming culture. I mean, what kind of trash is this? Because when you watch Matrix Reloaded, it is a continuation of the first Matrix. Aha, this is Neo. He's now the one. He's now a superhero. He's now fully within his elements of the chosen one. So you're really continuing the s story, you know. It, it's, I mean, it's both because I, 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 I had elements of it, but it's boggles the mind that like that first half of this film, or the first 15, 20 minutes, where you're having this idea that the Matrix was a video game, and none of it really existed, and I'm like, as I'm watching, I'm like, what the hell am I? I mean, what the hell am I watching? Like, this film is a complete and utter train wreck. And I think the idea is you've, you've got someone who is, who... Lana Wachowski didn't want to make a Matrix. In an interview given, they said, why did you want to come back? They said, no, I didn't want to come back. I came back because both of my parents died. And Neo and Trinity were two characters that meant a lot to me. So I wanted to make them because Neo and Trinity meant a lot to me. So it started from a place of grief. And for me, I have no beef with that and so forth. Do whatever you want to do with grief and so forth. But we're talking facts and real here. You obviously didn't have a story. You didn't have a story that's pushed its forward. You just wanted just to make a film for the sake of making a film. So you just wanted just to comment on Hollywood and so forth for the sake of comments. So obviously, that is why that, that is the stupidity of this film. This isn't a Matrix 4. This is, oh, how do I feel about the influence of the films that I that I made with my sibling? Because remember, Lana Wachowski is not the creator of the Matrix; she's the co-creator. Even though people say Sophia Stewart really said said it was about it may have been stolen, but you're the co-creator. So the, the so the co this is just the co-creator making a commentary as to how their film impacted the world. So it isn't it isn't Matrix Four. Hence why this is it's it's a dumbass movie. Hence why when I watched, I was like, okay, whatever, because it's a, it's a, it's a dumbass film. <laughs> it's a, it's a dumbass film. It, it it isn't a continuation of the Matrix. It isn't adding to the law of the, of the Matrix. It's like, oh, I want to make a commentary on this, 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 and this, and let me just throw all that stuff in there because you just have a whole bunch of ideas just thrown in there without any coherency whatsoever. Oh my god, there's so many elements. Let's talk about the character of Morpheus. I'm confused. Because in the film, you see a statue of Morpheus. So obviously, he obviously died. But you don't really know how he died. You really don't know really what happened to him. So he obviously died off screen. And there's a statue of him that um, old now be shows Neo in the real world. But at the same time, you then hear that Neo, he created like a program or something called Morpheus that now is was previously Smith. But it's a mixture of Morpheus and Smith. I'm like... I'm I'm confused and I don't care. See, sometimes you can be confused, but you want to know what what, what happens. But I'm confused and I and I don't give a damn. Yaya Abdul Martin II. I've only seen him in 
Um, this is the second thing that I've, I've, I've seen him. I saw a bit of Watch Watchmen. He is an okay actor. He's not a great actor. So it's already insulting that you've given him the moniker of Morpheus, something that was so iconic and meant so much to Lawrence Fishburne, who is one of the finest actors of his generation. Go watch what he, he does um, as Othello. You'll be shocked. And the performance that Yaya Abdul gives, man, it is one of the most <laughs> awkward, stupid... That's what, I mean, because really, Lan, I'm sorry, Lana Wachowski is, is really a moron. You are really a freaking moron. Because there is a scene. Do you know the scene in the first Matrix? Where he says, um, um, where Morpheus talks about, you know, the Matrix man. You know, do you want to know what it is, Neo? The Matrix is everyone around us, Neo. So it's like, when he talks about the, um, um, the Matrix and so forth, and about showing him the red pill and the blue pill, and just our conversation he has, that is a sci-fi classic scene. That is a classic sci-fi scene that I think Ivan did like a commentary on that scene on this channel like some like about a year or two ago. That very same scene is mocked. That scene is mocked and made fun of by a homeboy. Completely. Like that scene is literally it's made a mockery of by this yeah, yeah Abdul guy where he says that red pill, blue pill, blah 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 blah. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, what's going on? Like what the hell is going on here? Why are we why are, why are we showing flashbacks of Matrix 1, Matrix 2, and Matrix 3? Constantly. Maybe one or two, but constant flashbacks. And why are we having guys saying, Mr. I mean, it is, it's, this is, this, this, the stupidity of this film is incredible, man. Um, the action. You see, I already knew, I already knew, I, I said, guys, I already knew. Because um, when Wu Peng was the fight choreographer of the Matrix films, and his name wasn't here. I was like, okay, this is dodgy. You know, this is one of the best fights choreographers out there. You know, I think he even did Crouch and Tiger and Dragon. This is one of the, the top guys. He's not here. And it makes sense. Because when you watch the film, the fighting is, is horrendous. The fight scene between... Um, I'm going to call him Lofius. Yeah, yeah, Abdul's character. I'm going to call him Lofius. The fight scene between Lofius and Neo in his film is a piece of crap. From the editing... To how Yaya Abdul is. I said, wait a minute, did he even train? Because I'm confused. Like, wait a minute, it's like, is this supposed to be serious or is this a joke? Because it felt like it was a joke. The fight generally felt like if this was like a complete and, and, and not a joke. I mean, bro. And there is this there is a scene when he fights like the exiles. We have Merovingian acting like a complete dummy, just spouting all this nonsense. And the fight in itself is just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a complete, I mean, guys, man, because I've not even hit you with the clang. See, I'm see, I'm saving the haymaker. I'm just saving the haymaker. I'm just getting through all the, all the trash. I'm, I'm saving the hay haymaker there. It's for me, the only interesting thing about this whole thing, which isn't even that great because that's why this film is like a zero or a one out of 10, because the only interesting thing I can think of was how the real world has advanced. So you now have a mixture of synthetics with machines and so forth. So, okay, so there's a little bit of an evolution into the real world, but that isn't done well enough, and that isn't really that's not even really advanced well enough for it to really mean anything. And even when it's introduced, you're like, it's just sort of there. Then it's so it's it's sort of it's sort of like a meal, but it's not that's not well cooked. Like the meal looks interesting. Oh, this looks an interesting meal, but it's not cooked. <laughs> it's not cooked. So it just looks good, but when, but when you eat it, you're like, Ugh. so. That idea was a half cooked idea. Um, you see, people are obviously saying that you know Jessica Hennick, the character of Box, is the breakout. I again, I mean, like sorry, the shots and okay, 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 you want me to be real? Hashtag honesty. In the films, the captain, the captain that we knew was Morpheus. And they try to do a parallel because remember when you say, you know, no, this is my ship, you know, the Nebuchadnezzar. And then, you know, you see him how he just sort of like shows all of the people on his ship and so forth. And they try to mirror that same scene with this box character 
um, played by Jessica Hennig. And it just looks bad. It's just bad, man. Because I know she's not a bad actress and so forth. She no, she she's she's good. She's a decent actress. She's 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 decent. The character is trash. And I just didn't buy the character as being the captain of a ship. Simple. I just didn't buy I'm like sorry, I I can't I, I don't I didn't believe that you're you're the captain of the ship that people would actually follow you. I I, I, I didn't, you know. So um <sighs> This is a it's this 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 is a weird film. And when I mean that it's a weird film, it's it's weird in the bad sense. You know, sometimes you know you have weird films. Like what's it called? Um you could say like Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko is a very weird film, but it's weird in the good way. It's weird, but you know that oh there's definitely something there and something interesting there. This Matrix film is weird in the bad way. But guys, let's 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 get uh, to the real plan. So as we've so I said again, incoherent story, completely makes no sense. The character of Neo seems confused again. His character seems inconsequential. Um, you know, the, the story doesn't really grab you. The action is horrendous. The action is Matrix, which is known for quality, amazing action. Action here is awful. Just conveyor belt trash action. So you can see that. You po- you gave no attention to detail to action, which is what the Matrix films did so well. Um, but here's the real plan. See, at, see, at a, so at the point right now, I was like, so two thirds of the way through, I was like, okay, this isn't very good. This is this, this is just bad. But actually, this is just a bad film. It's not trash. This is just bad. Trinity. So guys, we're, we're going full spoils on this whole thing. Trent, Trent, Trent. I want to sit Lana Wachowski down. Just one on one. And just, 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 I just... I just want to talk. I just try to explain to Lana Wachowski that... Trinity wasn't a big deal. Trinity was there to serve Neo. She was there to serve the story. Morpheus was there for Neo. See, Morpheus was there to, was there to serve Neo... Trinity was there to save Neo. Smith was there, there to save Neo. Like, Neo is the hero. He is the hero with the sword. He is the one. He is the guy that, you know, goes all the way through. And I'll speak more about that with regards to, to the one. So Trinity just there. That's the love of life that, that, that's gave it the catalyst to really rediscover yourself in power one. Morpheus, he's the guy that finds you. Smith, that's your nemesis. You know, every hero needs their master and their teacher every hero needs basically it's similar to star wars or even back to the future you know like in star wars luke's master obi-wan Morph- um, neo's master morpheus luke's well it wasn't his girlfriend but at the time you thought he was his girlfriend but it was Leia. but obviously we know how that happened trinity and obviously luke's nemesis vader we know what happened neo's um nemesis smith so these are all the elements that just help to augment and give the hero purpose and so forth. Because you, you have to have the defined hero. That was the whole point. And the whole point of the Matrix trilogy was, the whole point of it was a belief in this um, archetype of the one. Finding out that that was BS and not real, and another system of, of, of control. And now it was that, okay, you may not believe in the concept of the one, do not believe in him. This man. Do you believe in this man? That this man, who isn't the one, but do you still believe this man can save you? Which is what Naobi said. Naobi said, I don't believe in the one. I never did. But I believe in him. So let's forget that about the, putting the trust in this, in this concept. Let's put the trust in, in this guy here. And he was like, let me roll. So that was the whole point of it. But Resurrections <laughs> flipped the script. And I said to say, no. There is no one. What? It's 2021. It's 2022. The world is different. The world is different. The way things were done back then. No. The world is different. (laughs) Guys, let me just put this out there. For a long time, 
The Dark Knight Rises was the worst ending to a film I'd ever seen. Just on a personal level. It was the it was the worst ending I'd ever seen was Dark Knight Rises. This is, without a doubt, the worst ending to a film I have ever seen. Hands down. This is the worst ending to a film I've ever seen. So the whole point of this film is Neo wants to free Trinity. Wants to free Trinity. Wants to free Trinity because when Trinity is alive and everything, okay, I get that. Then you have a situation where Neo. So you have a situation. You have a situation where Neo has Trinity on the top of a roof, <laughs> and then. They jump. I'm like, oh jeez, they jump, what's happening? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you know what's so funny, guys? Let me show you something. This is my phone. <clears throat> So this is what I view every day, man. So this is my phone. Check this out. Um, you see, that's what I see every day. Every so this is this this is the my, this is the main phone that I use. This is what I see every day. You know, obviously this is my laptop. Look at that. This is what I view every day. So every so this is laptop. This is my laptop that I use for work and everything. So this, this this is what I use every day. Check look 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 at this is what I this is what I look at and look at every day is this laptop. And look at the image there. Yeah, let me let me show you this. Look at that. So this so this is what I use every day. So what I use every day. Is your boy right here, man? Check this out. Look at that. So they jump off the roof, and then somehow Neo can make it. Because by the way, Neo can't fly. By the way, he's forgotten how to. He 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 just can't fly. So he tries to fly and he can't fly. Okay. So they jump off the roof, Neo and Trinity. And I'm like, okay, so Neo, whoa, what happened? Then Trinity is holding Neo up. I'm like, okay, this is weird. Like, I was thinking, about, is there like something holding them up? Is there like a skyscraper? Has the matrix flipped on itself? Because Trinity is just holding Neo up. And Trinity flies away with Neo. And then in the ending, Trinity and Neo fly into um, Neil Patrick Harris, the, the, the analyst's office, who is like the new architect. And she proceeds to beat the living crap out of him. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a parallel. Remember in the first Matrix film? In the first Matrix film, you see Neo on the phone. And it is like he's on the phone to the architect, threatening him about how he's going to free minds. But he's, he, never sees him, he never sees him face to face. And when he does see him face to face, and he comes face to face with the architect... The architect beats him down lyrically. Basically, he gives him a lyrical beatdown. But Trinity sees this new architect and beats the living crap. This Trinity beats the living crap out of this dude. While Neo is just in the back saying, oh, oh yeah, sure.
Because because guys, I'm just trying to just process. Because this just because it's because it's, it's just coming back to me now. So when this thing ends, they play a remix of Rage Against the Machine's Wake Up. But obviously it's by a female band. Can you connect the dots? Trinity is now another one. She can now fly. She beats up the analyst and pretty much mocks him while Neil is in the back. Then they play the female version of Rage Against the Machine Wake Up. Oops, I forgot. Lana Wachowski has transitioned from a man to a woman. Connect the dots. Connect the dots. So after the credits rolled, I thought, as I said, you know, it's, 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 it's time for me to reflect because Matrix meant a lot to me. A lot to me, bro. And anybody who knows me knows that Matrix meant a lot to me. Because I, I say that The Matrix, those two films, they are classics. They are, for me, two of the most important films ever made. In terms of what they do for action, what they do for sci-fi, what they do for philosophy, and what they just do for cinema and for, and for film. They are hallmarks. I just tell us what went wrong. What went wrong? Because this film has nothing to do with the first two films. And I'll be real with you, Revolutions is not good. But here's the thing, this, this is what I said. Re Revolutions ain't good and was a massive disappointment. If you were to watch Revolutions in a vacuum, without any of the prior films, just watch Revolutions in a vacuum, that siege on Zan was amazing. Those machine things and so forth, fighting the senses and so forth, was amazing. Mifune's character and what, and what he did, that was amazing. The setting, the setting of Neo and the Smiths, obviously the fights got a little crazy, but just the setting of the fight and so forth, and just the, big, the beginning start of the fight was some pretty amazing cinematography. So if you watch Revolutions in a vacuum without any expectation, it's, 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 it's all right. It's the expectation that just makes it horrible. But it's all right. Even if you watch this film in a vacuum, this film is confused. I cannot give you one good thing. I cannot give you one good thing about this piece of trash that I just watched. This film is a piece of trash. It's garbage. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything about explanations about, oh, it's about this. No, 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 no. See, the people who defend this film come up with ideas of like, oh, no, but it's a commentary on this. It's so meta. It's all, sh it's like, shut up. Make a movie. If you don't want to make a movie, but you want to do a commentary, write a freaking book. So you used Warner Brothers' money to do a self-reflective thing about how... I mean, what? what, I mean, what you see, if I'm Warner Brothers, bro, Lana and people, don't see you dare ask me for one cup or more. Don't you dare ask me for one cup or more ever again. Get the hell out of my office. You, This is a waste of money. It's a waste of cash. Um, because see, here's the thing here. This is how it should have gone. The Matrix was about f trying to find the one. And about the world is fake, and we're not trying to now help guys to get into the real world. That is what the first Matrix was about. Reloaded was how the one is now fully in fruition. He's now, he's now really, really in his elements, and it's about him ending the war. And the belief and the prophecy says, we, if the once the one reaches the source, the war will be over. He reaches the, the, the source and finds out that, oh, the one, who are created by the machines, is another system of control to keep human beings intact and under control mentally. Brilliant, amazing, superb. Morpheus is crushed. Everything he believed in was a lie, was, not, was just another system of, 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 of control. Revolutions was supposed to reveal that 
Zion is a matrix within a matrix. Zion is another level of the matrix. That's what was supposed to happen. That is what was supposed to happen. And then your next film, your Matrix 4, it doesn't have freaking new or so forth. It has someone new, completely different, and it's now trying to now find out, let's not try and find out what is the real world. And a Matrix 4 delves deeper into people who are opting for the blue pills, who are, who are opting to now stay inside the, the Matrix. You are advancing the idea of people wanting to be ignorant, wanting to now stay into the fake world and rejecting the real world. So you're sort of now expanding upon the idea of so forth and you have like a whole new crew and a whole new concept. You have a whole new one, a different version of the Matrix that's, that's, that's even much more intact and now have a, a different version of, of, of the one. Um... <clears throat> This, 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 this is the sad reality. The Matrix is over. And the Matrix ended at Reloaded. See, for me, the, end, the last scene of Reloaded for me is when Neo stops the machines in the real world in Reloaded. Because everything afterwards is linked into revolutions, you know. Because Reloaded is compromised because it's so reliant on revolution because it's, it ends on a cliffhanger. But for me, Reloaded ends when Neo stops those machines in the real world because you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. How is that possible? It's only possible because this is another version of the, of the Matrix. And Neo has been able to plug into the fact that this, this isn't real. No one, no one else does because every, every other human being believes it is real because they've been told it's real based on the um, control construct that the machines have built. Um, so, we, so we've not been able to see a continuation of that concept of what is real, what isn't real. How do you know, how do you know that this is real? So all because you were told this is real, how, how do you know it, it is real? <laughs> all because you're told Zion is real doesn't mean it's real. Like how, and which, which is, which is those, which the brilliant thing of what they should have been going towards because it's what Morpheus said and the first of the matrix, what is real? How do you define real? It's like, so it's like, that's the question of like, wait, wait, wh how do you know what is real? You know? Will the human beings ever, like, even if you're told that this seat, this rock and so forth, yeah, this is real. How can I, how can I verify it? All this whole thing with the machine city and so forth and everything could just be another construct. <laughs> it could be another program created by the by the machine. So, um, I mean, look, man, um, it's sad, man. It's sad because the matrix, oh, man, it's sad. And you know what? <laughs> You know what, like, the way... Because I'm trying to think, which went out worse? The Matrix or Star Wars? Because they both went out bad. But the thing about Star Wars is... That trilogy exists. So you can talk about the prequels, you can talk about, But there's a complete story that exists. Now, the unfortunate thing is they screwed over Luke Skywalker because you, you could have gotten a much exciting, older look. But that trilogy exists. Matrix doesn't have a trilogy. It's an unfinished story. A very good unfinished story, but still an unfinished story. Because I always tell her, look, Matrix, of course Matrix is an amazing film, but I, I've always felt that I'm, I'm, I'm in the minority. Matrix needs Reloaded. Because for me, it's too Reloaded for me to truly appreciate the Matrix. Because Matrix, it's just starting. Reloaded is when, oh, this is now the Matrix in the fullness of its way. And like, you look at Re Reloaded. Have you seen the Chateau scene? That's Chateau Fights. That is the best choreography in, in on all of film. Do you remember when Neo fought the Smiths in Reloaded? The three... Sorry, when he fought the agents in Reloaded? When he fought the three agents 
And we looked at, remember when Neo fought Seraph? Can I remember, do you remember the car chase? Do you remember Morpheus with a samurai sword fighting an agent with a samurai sword on a moving van? Remember when Morpheus sliced a van in half with a samurai sword and destroyed it with a gun? Remember when Trinity was on a motorbike and was running and was going against traffic on a freaking motorbike? Remember when Neo flew from freaking Timbuktu and saved these guys flying all the way through? Reloaded is the greatest action movie ever made. <laughs> so it's not it's not die out, I don't know. Reloaded is the greatest action movie ever made. Or call it action superhero movie ever made. Um see, so, see, I've always said <clears throat> look The Matrix is the better film. Like the Matrix is the Matrix is category the, the better film. Reloaded just took things to a whole new level. It's just it's see really, that's a sequel. It advances a whole new level, and you and I just felt a revolution was going to take that to an even a higher level, conceptually. But let's end it with resurrect. See, Lana, I get it. You're trying to prove a point. I'm trying to make a point. Like, what are you trying to say? Like, Trinity is now the one. Trinity is now the hero. So Neo has forgotten how to fly. So Neo and Trinity are now a union. But see, but see, that's the issue. Because again, when Lana was asked, "Why did you make this?" You know, like, like Neo and Trinity meant the most to me. And I'm like, <laughs> what about Morpheus? And that's where my beef lies, bro. When I used to do, when I I used to do acting, the scene I always used to do was Morpheus' scene in the Matrix, when the Matrix was first built. There's a man born inside. Like, that scene when he explains him, bro, bro. In terms of acting, that's one of the best acting scenes. I mean, that is one of probably the best acting scenes in any sci-fi. Bro, pretty much every Morpheus scene in the first Matrix is, is probably the best piece of acting in any sci-fi film ever. No, it is. When he explains the main... Bro, that is, that's not, that's not a, an iconic sci-fi scene. That is an iconic scene. When Morpheus explains the Matrix to Neo, and you trivialize the incredible, masterful work that Lawrence Fishburne did by making Abdul Mazin act like a little clown, he acted like a clown. He was he acted like a clown, and he dressed like a clown. So it's like a, it's like a double barrel. He acted like a clown, and he dressed like a clown. I was like, what? Wait, what is this nonsense? Jesus Christ! Fuck. <laughs> you have to laugh, man. Like when something has, when something is so bad, so ridiculous, it is literally spitting in your face and laughing and cackling. <laughs> That's what Lad is doing: is spitting in your face and laughing, cackling. You have to laugh. You can't be like, "Oh, this is trouble," because. This movie is so bad. It's so ridiculous. It's so stupid. It's such a piece of crap. But you just have to laugh. You have to laugh, man. You know? Um... But it's sad, though, because The Matrix had a lot of p potential. The mixture... Because for me, The Matrix was always, always, was always better than Star Wars. Always. Because the blend of um, martial arts... Sci-fi, philosophy, action, visuals was unmatched. There were there was nobody else that was doing what these guys were freaking doing, man. You know, on this kind of level, man. So <sighs> if if you're meant to give a mark, so that's what I was trying to think. I was trying to give a mark out of this, man. Um I'll give it a class A break because at least it was made. <laughs> you know, there could because there's some good acting, there's some good production here and there and so forth. So because scholarship is where this is just like on the freaking floor base. So I'll give it a class A break. But this is it. This is this 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 is generally a trash film. And um I think I 
and this and 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 this this is why it's, it's okay, guys. You want me to be real? You don't want me to be real? I want to use the example of Rage Against the Machine. I maybe read Chili Peppers as well. I, you people could argue that one of Rage Against the Machine's best albums was Evil Empire, and the frustration of Tom Morello, um, what's it called? Tim Comerford and um, Brad, Brad, Brad Wilk, drummer, guitarist, bassist, was that, why do we spend so long? But Zap De La Rocha, the lead um, vocalist, was like, that's, that, that's his process. So he spent a long time because he knew that making something quality required hard work and it was, and he, they, and it was difficult. But that's conflicts they had produced great art. My, my brother made a great example, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Their best album is Blood Sugar Sex Magic. And they made that when they were high on drugs. And ever since then, once they've been clean, they've not made an album as good as Red Blood, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. When the Wachowskis made The Matrix, they were guys dealing with an internal conflict of, am I a man, am I a woman, am I a man, am I a woman, and so forth. So their psychology and their mentality was different. So that is why you saw something like a Matrix and they reloaded. Obviously, it went for a revolution, but when you look at Reloaded and, and Matrix, there is a certain intensity to the kind of film. There's a certain structure. And even, I think, it, I, I forgot it was, it was one of the actors said that the Wachowskis, when they made the Matrix, everything was storyboarded. Everything was very clearly to define. There was a hardcore structure, maybe to do with how they were thinking. But once they now transitioned and so forth and, and everything, they now felt a lot more free and they weren't really so as structured. The people that made The Matrix and Reloaded are not the same people that made Resurrections or Speed Racer or Cloud Atlas or Jupiter Ascending. They're different. Now, I am happy for them that you're living your truth, that you're happy in your identity. I'm happy for you. But the reality is the reality. These are not the same people. Because you cannot tell me that the person who made Matrix Resurrections is the same person that made The Matrix and Reloaded. These films are worlds apart. I look at Resurrections and all I just see is, okay, you're trying to make these statements here, statements here, this is flimsy, this comedy thing here, the looks, it's just, it's all over the place. When you look at Matrix and look at Reloaded, it's tight. It's watertight. It's telling something that's very well-defined, very focused, knows exactly what it is, it is, it is doing and everything is very well Control. Don't think it's banging you over, over the head. Everything is subliminal. Everything is, is, is under the surface. They're all underpinnings here. And that's just the real. That's just real. So, Matrix is finished. It's done. Because just like with Star Wars and George Lucas, just like with James Cameron and Terminator, the only people that can give you a Matrix are the Wachowskis. Because it's such a unique mix. No one can give you, like, if you give it to, like, a Spielberg or you give it to um, um, a freaking Cameron or, or so forth, they wouldn't be able to, like, they, they make it well, but it would not, not be quite it because the people that, that really understand it are these guys, the Wachowskis. Because the Matrix was such a unique concoction. Because it was such a mix, it was such a specific mixture of Japanese anime, of philosophy, of Hong Kong action of sci-fi, philosophy, and so forth um, put into okay, so it was a nice concoction. So, it's finished because mentally, psychologically, where they're at right now is not are not the ingredients needed to make a quality matrix. And it's a shame because this is a this franchise is ripe. It is ripe. I mean, you, you're going to give me the concept of what is real, what isn't real, human beings, machines, kung fu, um, um, literally your mind and your imagination is a limit to what you can do within a virtual world, battling reality within a simulation. Like, there, it's, there is so much you can do with this matrix world, so much. But, and I'm sure if you give it into a creative person's hands, I'm sure they could do something very interesting with this, for, for, for sure. For sure. Like, if you gave this to Aronofsky, 
I'm sure, you know, probably the best thing that could happen to Matrix now is if it's similar to the an, an, Animatrix. You just give the world to specific directors. Like Aronofsky, just do a standalone Matrix story. A standalone Matrix story about the concepts of the Matrix. Just do like a 90 minutes film set into the world of the concept of the, of, of the Matrix. That's, I think that is the only best way to go. But as far as the franchise as a whole, the story as a whole, it's it. Oh, it's it done. It, like Resurrections has completely and totally just put that all to, to bed now. You know, because what I saw was complete trash. And my thing is, and this is, and this is, and this is what people need to ask themselves. And that's why I want to say to Lana Wachowski. Trinity? I love Trinity. But of course I love Trinity. But I know what time it was. Trinity, of course Trinity had a role. But I know what time it was. The foundation of Matrix is Morpheus, Neo, Smith. That's the fa- that is the foundation. Really, the, the real foundation... Do you know what the foundation of, of what Matrix is? It's, it's Morpheus and Smith. Why? They're the strongest actors. <laughs> it's, just, it's as simple as that. Because they're the strongest actors, they're the guys that give us that depth. Because Hugo Weaving and Lawrence Fishman are such good actors, they're the, they're the characters that say, what's up? Karen Moss is a decent actor. She's decent. She's not great. But she's decent. But she's not great. Karen, Karen Moss ain't Hugo Weaving and Lawrence Fishman. Kenny Reeves is a crap actor. Let's just keep it aside. I love... Jo- Bro, I love. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a John Wick plaque up here soon, very soon. So I love John Wick. So let's just don't get it to say that I love John Wick. Ken Reeves is not a good actor. He's not. He's Ken Reeves is a bad actor. So the people that were really driving the story was Morpheus and Smith, specifically Morpheus. <laughs> so you so once you not take Lawrence Fishburne and Morpheus away from it, and you and you not take his acting. What he did with the character from it, oh, the thing it it collapses. Because even if you have Smith, but Morpheus was just the cement holding things together. Because okay, Neo, you be the main guy. Trinity, you be the love interest. But no, Morpheus, you're you're keeping things together because you're such a strong actor. Because you're just you're such a strong actor, you're, you're really keeping things intact. So. You see, for me, I was prepared. See, Revolutions, I was, I was not prepared. See, Revolutions, remember, Revolutions, I went off the back of re reloaded So, Revolutions was crushing for me because I, oh. The moment I saw the first trailer of Resurrections, I knew that, oh, oh, okay, this, something is up here. Then I saw more stuff, more promo material. I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is garbage. So when I watched it, oh, it wasn't really like a, I was like, oh, this is, this, this is, this is just nonsense. This is, this is just, this is, this is just crap. So, but, and, and, this, and this, this is what is scary. I prepared myself for crap. I prepared myself for garbage. I had wedges. I had Ben and Jerry's cookie dough ice cream and so forth, which is actually damn good, by the way. I had all this stuff as well. But I was still shocked by what... I, not for one second, because I had rumors, not for one second did I believe that they would make Trinity fly, make her beat the living crap out of the analysts and so forth, and play the female version of Rage Against the Machines Wake Up as an ending credit scene. I didn't think you'd be that on the nose. This is, you know, so I don't, I don't know whether you're doing like, oh, we're self-referential. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't know what else, I don't, I don't, I don't give a crap. If you don't want to make a continuation that's keyword advances the story forward, stay at home or write a book. But you can't waste people's time to say, oh, there's a Matrix 4. Oh, you're, oh, this is a continuation of Matrix. This is another thing in the entry, and you're looking backwards. Which is what Lady Wachowski said. Lady Wachowski said, said, why do you want to go back? <coughs> why do I want to um, visit what came before? We should always be looking forward, man. So, guys, this has been a long one, man. Um, um, I mean, I've given... Um, my thoughts here 
and so forth. But as I said again, this was because um, this, 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 it's it's a big film. It's a it's it's a it's a because this for me this film represents goodbye. Like this film is goodbye. You know because as I said again, look, bro. I mean. It's it's so sad. It's I mean it's so sad because I don't know whether you guys remember when the Matrix kicked him out. Like, and this is why you say so that I don't think the Wachowskis realize what the Matrix is. They think they do. I don't think they actually do because when you look at where Revolutions was going and I look at Res Resurrections, do you realize what's made Matrix so good? Matrix. Oh, there wasn't there wasn't a preachy preachy thing about oh what about this no, the, in and of itself it was a good film. Like basically, perfect a, a, example: Cornel West. Cornel West said it's the, the best. He said that the beauty about the Matrix are uh, the film has like four hundred levels. Some people walk away with one, some with ten, some with twenty, some with forty, sixty, seventy, some with two hundred, some with all four hundred levels. People can watch the first Matrix and. Oh, that's that's a great action film. They go watch it and say, "Oh, that's a great sci-fi film." Or they go watch it and say, "That's a great action sci-fi film." That's really saying something about rare reality. You can watch Reloaded and appreciate it for an amazing action mo- mo- movie. <coughs> you can say that you know what? That is a great action set piece movie. But you can watch Reloaded like someone like me, where I appreciate the action as an action fan. I appreciate the sci-fi as a sci-fi fan. But man, this film is saying something very, 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 very deep. Because I remember when I first saw that architect scene, I was like, man, I know this is a big scene, but I have no idea what this guy is saying. And I watched it again, and again, and again, and I understood it. People say, oh, he just said Mumbo Jumbo. Now, I know what Mumbo Jumbo is. Mumbo Jumbo was, was, was some soft set in this film. But I can explain, like, the architect pretty much said to New Year's that we created a matrix. Every time we create this program, there's an anomaly, which is you. And... Because this anomaly always comes through, rather than ignoring the anomaly, we're going to use the anomaly as a system of control. So you're going to form the archetype of a hero, which is what human beings need. And this hero is going to now lead these guys astray. And we're just, and we're just going to just reboot this again and again and again. And the process of finding the one, him going to the source, and the source rebooting the matrix is what's going to just keep this control going again and again and again. Until we can maybe get rid of the anomaly. That's pretty much what it said in a, in a nutshell. But the key of what's that scene was was this is just another system of control. Hence why, just like with Empire Strikes Back, it was such an amazing part two. Because that's part two set things up beautifully for a part of like, oh, what's gonna happen now? Because part one, for the bulk of part two was about this is the hero, this is the one. And that was just completely discarded. Which is amazing because you're like, oh wow. Because it's one thing to sort of like subvert guys, which is what that clan Ryan Johnson did with the last Jedi. But another thing to say this is really sub- subversion. It makes sense. Because this whole film is about a process of control and controlling human beings. What, be- what better way to control human beings than to give them a heroic figure that they can mount behind and give them the illusion that this hero is now going to free all, all, all of them? So, that's the thing. So, I mean, look, man. I mean... Because, I, you know, I, I said before that, man, like, well, how would I feel Seeing that green code come back again and so forth, and you see, guys, we I we knew no Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus, no Hugo Weaving as Smith, no Don Davis, the composer, John Gator. He was actually John Gator was actually in the film. John Gator didn't actually do any visual effects here. Kim Barrett, costume designer, no, not here. Bill Pope, Bill Pope, the cinematographer. Because what made the Matrix, Matrix so iconic is the look. It had a very distinct look. The he's not, so there are many key elements. Not around, and of course, Lily Wachowski. Because Lily Wachowski, you're not the creator; you're the co-creator, which means that it. This is these are two minds coming to, together to to try and um, say what's up for this thing. So let's just keep it a stack and realize what you truly are. You're the co-creator here. So when all those key elements were missing, as I like, know, something is, is up here. But it's, the reason why it's so sad is that you look at the MCU and comic book m- m- movies, there is nothing original there. And 
Hollywood film is desperate for some originality, which is why it goes back to the, the video I did, which in soon about the beauty of an arcane and sweet game. Because when Matrix came, bro, in my view, Matrix had a bigger impact than there has never been a film or franchise that has had a bigger impact culturally than The Matrix. Never, you know, because it was like it's because Matrix was it it is it, it, it is very appealing. Lightsabers, okay, it's cool and everything, but it does does lightsabers have a worldwide appeal? Matrix, that is a worldwide appeal. Because for Matrix, all you need are sunshades, a leather jacket, and that's it. It's kung fu, it's guns, it's cool, and also it's contemporary. You know, like people will people will always wear shades, people will always wear leather jackets and so forth, the white red on also. So it's could it could, it could always work because, and it could always be cool. And you're mixing cool with philosophy sci-fi and action so it was so right man but i mean good th everything that ha and it's, it's a quote from the film everything that has a beginning has, has an end like you know it's um and but okay the, the now be character okay i mean okay so <laughs> let me get this straight so you bring back niobe but not morpheus it's like I just want, I just want just to just have a like Lana Wachowski like this and this is what make this this is what gives me like shivers as Lana Wachowski. Did you not appreciate what Lawrence Fishburne did? Now another part of me is glad Lawrence Fishburne wasn't in his film because at least he didn't go down with this complete trash. So the the shining light is the fact that he wasn't involved in this piece of crap. But on the real though. You don't bring back a Lawrence Fishbone? So, because my second thing is that I don't think that Lana Wachowski actually appreciated what um, Lawrence Fishbone did for this film. Um, so, it's, 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 just, it's just odd. Man. But guys, man, I mean, it's been a long one, man, because there's, just, there's been just so much that I'm about to say and bring us, man. But I, like, Matrix... If handled well, could have, and this is the funny thing, today, today, this is the perfect time to bring that to Matrix. Because it's so relevant. <laughs> because what the Matrix was saying in terms of questioning reality, what is real, what is not real about unplugged, about being plugged in, is huge. And the scary thing is, that especially, because remember, in 1999, there was no broadband. There was no iPhone. You know, the incest was not really popping off as, as much as it was. But if you're not bringing back the Matrix, which is a computer program and about being plugged in and we are all plugged in to our phones and so forth, that is an amazing piece of commentary. Hence why a Matrix bring brought us to, to, to today, of course, most guys would choose the blue, blue, the, the blue pill. So the kind of Matrix you make is how do you now get guys away from being plugged into their phones and living a cushy life with the iPhones to say, no, no, that isn't real. Step outside. Be within reality. Be human. To be human is to put that phone down and to really connect with nature, connect with, with, what, with what is real. Like, that is where... That, the theme of a Matrix 4 is how do you unplug guys from today's world? Because it's easy to, it was easy to unplug guys back in 99, pre-iPhone, pre-smart TV. You know, pre Xbox Live and so forth, but to unplug guys now, that it's that super hard. So, what kind of arguments can you give me with my iPhone, my Android, my my MacBook, my smart TV to unplug and go to the freaking real real, real world? And to so miss the boat there, and to not really see that, I just think it's sad. You know, I just I just think that's that's just sad and unfortunate, man. So, guys, look, man. <sighs> Matrix crap corrections, man. Um, the end of the Matrix franchise. It's over. It's done. It's done for. And for Lana Wachowski, you single handedly dis like just this was be clear, Lana Wachowski, you single handedly destroyed and butchered an extremely amazing special creation.